Lisa Frankenstein. Frank, Frank, what is it? Frankenstein. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of Frankenstein movies of late. Um, birth, Rebirth. Poor Things. It just the, I don't know what's up with the Frankenstein thing. Now, of course, there's been iterations of Frankenstein since, you know, film was a thing. Yeah. Right? People have been doing it forever. Uh, we get endless, um, you know, retellings of this story in different ways. Um, so that's nothing new. Uh, but I just feel like there is an onslaught mm-hmm. of, of Frankenstein type films right now in the last six months or so i just feel like there's been so many there has been that being said i've enjoyed all of them that i've seen so you know i'm not going to complain all right so diablo cody um who of course wrote juno and uh more in line with this channel jennifer's body Mm -hmm. uh which has become kind of a cult classic at this Mm -hmm. point um and this follows uh Kath- Catherine, right? K- Catherine Newton. It's Catherine, yeah. Catherine Newton's <laughs> character here, Lisa. Her last name is not Frankenstein. No. Uh I will not spoil what her last name actually <laughs> is because it becomes a joke in the yeah. film. Um she has a tragic event that leads her to a new family. Mm-hmm. And um she because I, I don't know if we don't really get to know her before that so i don't really know what she was like yeah. pre tragedy mm-hmm. but post tragedy for sure she's the odd duckling she is uh she's quiet and she's kind of gothy and uh mm-hmm. she is obsessed with this bachelor's graveyard and she makes a wish that comes true mm-hmm. and uh we we've got a guy resurrected um who starts hanging out with her uh that stuff actually kind of reminded me of encino man a little bit oh yeah I can um see that. you know yeah like the caveman coming out of the grave mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and them cleaning them up and all that yeah, stuff yeah. right um and then yeah I, I i don't know what else to say about that there they have a um they have an odd relationship mm-hmm. throughout, uh, and and the dialogue is very Diablo Cody esque. Um, so overall, I I did enjoy this movie quite a bit. I feel like there is some stuff that doesn't land, and there's mm. a certain like I've always noticed there's like certain scenes in movies like this that have just a flat tone to them Mm. and it's like lacking music or it's lacking like a a punchline that that really lands or something there's always just this like i can always feel it when the when the scene happens where i'm just like this is this really just feels flat Mm. and there was a few of those moments but overall most of them i actually i quite enjoyed I, i i really found this to be very um sweet and mm-hmm. cute but also darker than i would have expected yeah. although having seen jennifer's body i don't know really why i would think that going yeah. in um i definitely want to hear your thoughts I, I have quite a few things to say but but what do you think i really loved it i thought it was also like very sweet and um, those scenes that you're talking about, those always work really well for me, though, the like quiet kind of flat deliveries like I they hit comedically. I think that they work some well. work here and I just, some don't. all of them worked for me, mm-hmm. I guess. Okay. But um, I'm a fan of that kind of like humor, too, where it's just like kind of awkward and weird. Um, but I yeah, I really love the film. I think that the characters are very endearing. Um, I really love the relationship between um, Lisa and her stepsister. I think that yeah. was really cool. And it was kind of um, like a flip on what you would have expected the relationship to be like. So I appreciated that. Yeah. And I liked all the 80s, like, you know, because it is set in the 80s. Like, 1989. Yeah, the 80s references yeah. and stuff. I think those are really fun. 
um and just like the general aesthetic and everything i was super into that i think the music is really great as well the soundtrack's awesome and yeah i thought it was like very romantic but also messed up <laughs> and like sad so i was i was really into the to it overall yeah i so as far as that goes I, okay so one thing i definitely want to say here on this is that i feel like this movie has a very like it, it's gonna have a wide appeal to a degree mm -hmm. but i think it's gonna really land with a target audience and i think a target audience is gonna be teenage to early 20 year old girls mm. um and i think this will be kind of like a not i think this will be a nostalgic pick in 10 years mm. for like high school girls like maybe early teens they saw this it was a little edgy yeah it had some you know some darker themes some sexual references yeah. that are like just on the cusp of being inappropriate, but just within that wheelhouse yeah. of the parents being like, oh, okay, I guess we could let them watch it. So they, they kind of feel like they're doing something wrong, but kind of mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah. I don't know. So I, I just, yeah, I definitely think this is going to be a, like a modern um, Heathers or, mm -hmm. or something like that. Because that's this kind of tone for me with something like Heathers. Uh, the director here, which I don't think she's done anything else, Zelda something. Mm. I want to say this might be her first feature. I, I could be wrong on that. Uh, I thought I thought when I looked it up a, a while back that she had uh, only done like like TV stuff or something. But regardless, um, she was absolutely influenced pretty heavily as a lot of like weird quirky kids in the eighties were, uh, by Tim Burton. Yes. There's yes, a lot of Tim sure. Burton esque in here. And, and I, I really liked above all else, the style yes, of yeah. the film. Style's great. And that, that's its strongest aspect for mm -hmm. sure. I like the characters and I like that the film took Lisa in a different direction mm -hmm. than I was expecting. She's not squeaky clean. She's a pretty morally gray character. Yeah. And I was not expecting that um, going into this. And even in the first like 10 or 15 minutes, I, yeah. I just thought she was going to be the kind of classic uh, goody character mm -hmm. and man does she go down a, a darker rougher path than i was expecting yes um and as you said i i did like the way they took the the stepsister mm -hmm. because they kind of flip it on its head mm -hmm. and you would think she would be shitty mm -hmm. typically um especially with her being like the popular girl yeah. and the cheerleader and you know her her stepsister who had this terrible thing happen to her is is all like dark and weird and mm -hmm. her all of her friends don't like her and you would expect that to be like she's gonna fall in line with the truth yes yeah but and not at all not at all which yeah. i loved me too me too i really love that yeah mm -hmm. um and uh, the other you know half of this film um the monster frankenstein's mm -hmm. lisa frankenstein's monster in here um is actually played by the kid from big daddy um which is interesting to see because i grew up on that movie um and to see him like as an adult now is weird in a movie i don't know if i've seen him in anything i keep he's opening your a, phone to look at shit but you have stuff. Um, wasn't he in zach and cody <laughs> am i crazy for thinking cole sprouse was in that <laughs> Um, no, probably, but I didn't see that. Well, it was a it was a show. It was like a kid. Yeah, show. I know what it is. Okay, um, and then I thought that I he was it. in that other show that I didn't watch, um, where he played Jughead. Oh, oh, Did you watch? Oh yeah, Riverdale. Riverdale. Is that him? Oh, that's right. That is him, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Can't find him in this freaking hair. It is. You're right. That is him. Yeah. Hmm. I just yeah. never put that together. I only watched one season, but that makes sense. Because mm -hmm. um, he has an identical twin brother, which I don't know 
if his brother does anything. <laughs> yeah, I don't know I don't, if his brother is just, like stuck with it or not. Um, but he, I really liked his performance. I thought he did a great job. Um, I thought he had some really great like physicality. Yeah. And it was very like comedic, but also very endearing. And you're just kind of like rooting for them the whole time, I feel like. Yeah. But yeah, he had a cool performance. And I mean, of course, like, you know, Lisa is the star for sure. And I think that she's super quirky, super unique, very fun character to watch. You know, tonally, I would say off the top of my head, a film this reminds me of, just as I said, tonally would be spontaneous, mm, mm-hmm. right? Where everyone yeah. just keeps spontaneously combusting. Yeah. Um, it kind of has that feel to it, yeah. which I'm a big fan of. I could see that. Um, yeah, this this has definitely got rewatchability to mm-hmm. it. As I said, this is going to really work for for a specific crowd. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think most people who go see this are going to come out of it being like, I had a good, I had a good time. Mm-hmm. It was fun. Um, but the crowd it hits with, this is going to be like a vibe to them. Oh, sure. I could definitely see this becoming like a cult classic kind yes. of film for a lot of people. Um, They'll have people like cosplaying to, yeah, as, totally. as the two. Yeah. It's really perfect to be released right before Valentine's Day, too. Um, oh, yeah. Like that was that was a great plan because it's definitely like a romantic movie, but it's a horror movie, too, and a comedy. And it's a nice combination of all those things. Um it's an offbeat romance for sure. It's definitely an offbeat romance. But I think our audience that we were with really enjoyed it. Um, there was a lot of like reactions to jokes and like just interaction mm-hmm. with like the film in general, which is usually a good sign. And everybody seemed to really like just be having fun with Except it. Except for the couple guys that were like in front of us that were having like full conversations out loud. Yeah, but they were like enjoying it though. I yeah. thought they were like laughing, and it was just like making them talk about so many things. Yeah. So it's definitely a recommendation though from us. You know, Cole is kind of unrecognizable. I I didn't really yeah, ever put together um, that he was that Jughead from from uh, mm. Riverdale. Like now, the now that I saw his IMDb page, like that picture, because I'd seen. You know, I went to the IMDb page for that show when I was watching season one. I never really like linked him mm. to Big Daddy at that point. Um, and it was only because of a buddy of mine uh, who saw this early and was like, oh, my God, this is the kid from uh, Big Daddy. And then mm. I saw the name and was like, oh, yeah, that is that kid. Right. Yeah. I just didn't connect the two. So it is. Yeah. I, but throughout the film, he looks like a dead guy. Yeah. And, you know, he he looks less dead throughout Mm -hmm. but um yeah he he's kind of unrecognizable to the jughead character in Mm. riverdale he looks nothing like that guy um i mean yeah i haven't seen riverdale at all so i don't really know yeah what his performance was like but but i yeah i think he's great here i Mm -hmm. think um i think everyone is i i don't i I liked everybody's performance i i i had a good time i think if you're into movies like the offbeat um, style of of Diablo Cody, but also movies like Heather's, as pre mentioned and uh, or aforementioned, and um, Spontaneous and uh, Tim Burton style. Um, yeah, this this will definitely be uh, up your alley. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I, you know, unless you're somebody who's like completely opposed to romance and and you think that this is going to be too teeny bopper for you Mm. i think it goes darker than you might expect but it's also not going to go like hardcore or anything no um so if you're just someone who's like opposed to that kind of stuff then this probably isn't for you i'm not it's not going to win you over with like the gore department or like any of that stuff like (laughs) this is this is this is probably fine for you know the rating that it says you you could take a 13 year old 12 year old i know 13 is the cutoff but you know 12 or 13 somewhere in that area would mm. be totally fine yeah going to this so uh some people are like super opposed to that but i i think the tone for this is perfect yeah i, I wouldn't I, I don't feel like if this film had gore and nudity and all that stuff, it just wouldn't work it's it's not that kind of film it very much 
uh, is it feels PG thirteen, yes, but it not does. in a bad way. Yeah, definitely not. I think it's I think it fits really well. It's it's aiming towards teenagers. Yeah. And that's not a bad thing. I don't know no, why people say that as a negative a lot. They're like, yeah. oh, it's a teeny bopper movie. So? So was Clueless. There's tons of so was fantastic Jawbreaker. Movies. So yeah. was, you know, yeah. freaking so many movies. Breakfast Club and sure. 16 Can. All John Hughes movies were teeny bopper movies yeah. back in the day. And those are like classics to my generation. So exactly. it's, it's weird to me that they would say that. Although those were R-rated. That's going to be their argument. Mm -hmm. But there's there's plenty of like PG-13 um teeny bopper movies that we loved growing up and teenagers need movies too yes right like that they don't need to always be watching our movies it's just <laughs> weird like, there's there's like kids movies yeah and this is something my kids and i have the the problem with all the time is is that there's like really little kitty movies yeah and then there's like adult movies and the in-betweens there's just not a lot of them. Yeah. There's just not a lot of them. My kids and I are always looking for things to watch together. And it's like, it's either like super kitty. And my kids are like, eh. And I'm like, eh, I don't want to watch something too kitty. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the adult stuff, they're like, no. And I'm like, you know, I you know, don't want to. So I like having movies like that for, for the mid-range. And, and I found this to be totally enjoyable as an adult man. Yeah. But I guess I'm not the typical adult man. I don't mm -hmm. know. That's it. We talked too long. <laughs> so let us know if you watch it. It's in theaters now. Get out there. Check it out. Let us know.